pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, please call the here. 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 Okay, I went through item number four. I will ask for a motion to approve the regular board meeting minutes of November 28, 2000. October the 3rd, 2017. I'll get a motion. So motion is um, lost for lack of second. Next item, public comment. Item number five. All questions and comments must be directed to the mayor. Each speaker may comment on any matter pertaining to the business or village. Each speaker is allowed one opportunity to speak for up to three minutes and may not engage in debate, counter replies, or rebuttal. Take your name. Judy Janice, dear. Last week I got up and I was asking for making statements from Village. My family has lived in Saga Village for over 45 years. I'm here tonight to have my day in court. 
Last time I went to court, I had to pay $850. And I listened to a sympathetic speech. And that's why I'm here tonight. I listened. I was always taught there's two sides to every story. In this case, one side was listened to, the renter, who wasn't paying the rent. The owner received a letter, so much for listening to both sides. First, let me say, I was wrong. I am only a mother, a teacher, was a pastor's wife, and consider myself a good citizen. I am not a landlord, but I have become the biggest sucker in South Village and a very poor judge of character. And we came to South Village for over a year, so I know what the expectations of a renter. We came with the intention of living here. Unfortunately, I am convinced we cannot build this town on renters. Some renters are like hitchhikers. He only wants a ride. It's your job to buy the gas, oil, to maintain the car. Doesn't have a car payment or a commitment. My renter didn't have a commitment either, even though he did sign a contract, which he broke almost immediately. Hence, that's why we report. Six people were going to live there, but shortly after that, his wife had a baby, then his daughter had a baby, and then we moved in to live in boyfriend. The contract stated no pets. When he left on April 1st, he had two small dogs and two big dogs who were great lawnmowers. I have no rest. He got an ADT system, which he wanted me to pay for. Thank God I didn't. But last but not least, when the inspector for the village came in, he wanted to know why there were six little mattresses down in the basement. I was confused myself when there were three nice bedrooms upstairs. Six people wanted to sleep in the basement? I'm a widow. I'm not a corporation. I wasn't making repairs fast enough. Why didn't he just move on? Let me tell you why he didn't move on. He didn't pay the rent. March, February, or April. Then he gave time. Of course, I gave him time for him to get a down payment, a new truck, which he bragged about, and for me to lose my house. I raised my children here, I shopped here, I attended functions as much as possible. I'm not moving. The main reason I came tonight was to try to understand why. Why it's got to stop. We knew we're building this town on people who have an investment. Hitchhikers don't have an investment. <coughs> Another house burned up, no tax money. Another gangbanger who probably doesn't even own a whole pair of pants, let alone a belt. He played the system. And he thinks he's won. Well, he has The day of the slumlord is decreasing, but the day of the renter con artist is increasing. Always in the past, I paid the rent so I wouldn't lose the house. Not this time. It's amazing how many crooks know the law. Mr. Mayor, I came here tonight because I do love this town. Everyone is not a hitchhiker, and I'm not saying every renter is a crook. In closing, just let me say this. The person who owns the car is a big loser, big time loser, not the hitchhiker. He had an agenda, and at least now he's in Will County, where he will not win, I'm sure. I'm praying right now that the person who rented him the house is, has more capital than I did. Because I can tell you right now, he'll never be happy. He'll move right on. Hitchhikers do that. If you're going even thinking about renting a house to someone in South Village, don't. You can't win.
to a major portion of the IDPA loan being forgiven, thanks to May and Hank's efforts. He reduced the water rate from 750 to 650 per thousand gallons. Since this money was no longer needed to pay the loan, you, however, will contain an office and immediately reverse this reduction. Monies collected for water and sewer are not meant to cover other costs. However, these monies are continually being used for unrelated village expenses. It is unfair and unjustified to <coughs> the burden of higher rates on the residents. I hope the trustees will take these facts into consideration tonight and they cast their vote. You know what Item E is Mr. Panels. 
Uh, that 67,000 comes out of chip money, so it's not coming out of water sewer fraud, and that was something that we had talked about, oh, I would say a few months back, back last year, uh, of this person fixing that area up, which is right there on Salt Trail, all the way, if you can see the new, um, the new gravel, the landscape, the uh, different uh, uh, stuff on the building, he was supposed to take care of all that and he did and we're awarding the money. Now what we're giving them the money now after everything has been checked out, after everything has been, and that was the stuff last week too. After everything was approved and the work was done uh, to our expectations. Thank you. There's that's it. No, I asked you about Dr. Strong. Oh, Dr. Strong, what what I oh I'm sorry. Um Dr. Strong has been here for I think 2015, um, David Hank brought her in through the Owens Group. Uh, she was used sparingly, and uh, as a matter of fact, everyone says, but why didn't we pay? It was being paid. Through Owens Group, we had a, it was a contract that was $50,500. Included in that, they would give us um, um, a gentleman that would do our health inspection, not health, but our health and safety classes that we had for police, fire, and uh, public works, and so many hours of HR services. Well, upon renewing this contract with Owens Group, I took that away because I didn't think it was feasible for all for what it was, uh, what we were paying for and what we were getting for that. But as far as HR, yes, we do. If you notice, uh, we haven't had any uh, employee um, Lawsuits, that's what they do. That's what HR does, make sure that we are compliant and compliant with um, the personnel in the village to make sure that we don't do or say something wrong that would put us in harm's way. That we would make, make sure that we are basically coming up to the 21st century with a lot of things that we haven't done and put in place. So yes, we need a human resource person. I am not a human resource person. I don't know the law like that. I don't know a lot of other things that are involved in that. But as far as the money is concerned, yes, we, it, 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 it's, it's a vendor. They have to pay their own costs. And today, in this evening's um, accounts payable, and for the last three accounts payable, we paid bills over $140,000 that was brought to us last year for this lawyer, this lawyer himself. And I didn't hear anything about that. It was one of the $59,000 that was done back in 2016 for one month. And then if you, if you look at the um, um, accounts payable, the last three after that was twenty-five, thirty, and 25000 Those were for monthly charges for one offer <coughs> for whatever that they charge us for. We have the readout, but that's what they charge. I'm trying to, and I have tried to, eliminate a lot of that because I don't think we need to, to continue to pay that, but we still have to be in compliance. So the best way to do things, that's, that's one way. You asked about, and it was talked about, the uh, $900 or whatever, that's the end of that, that month, and that's why that, it was showing on August, April 1st. But that's only for negotiation. That's not for HR. HR was voted on tonight. So HR was done. We were done with HR from how to bring him out from the Owens Group as of the end of March. So now I would like to have her hired as a consultant. And that will be the break that is already, we discussed that last week. Thank you. You said we paid Owens Group fifty thousand five hundred, and that included Dr. Stryker for a check. Um, now that you've renegotiated, has that gone down? And if so, to what? Does it compromise the the amount of pay her? Um, second. Can you 
explain how we can with disregard the Illinois statute that says you cannot raise somebody's pay when it's been budgeted. When it's been budgeted. We can't afford to raise the firemen and policemen who protect this village, but we can raise somebody else's pay we need to tighten up purse strings and not be spending money frivolously. We're supposed to have transparency of financial. It's not <coughs> transparent. It's been opaque. Thank you. In regards to what you said as far as transparency, if it wasn't transparent, man, you wouldn't have known about it. So it is transparent, and you're asking questions about it. As far as um, paying Dr. Strawder, um, and this is what I don't understand, as far as paying for a service that we desperately need, I already mentioned how many hours that, that she was going to be contracted for, how many days a week, and that's for HR. Negotiations is different. We're in negotiations now, and it's going to cost us a lot of money for our negotiations. Because it's going back and forth at a snail's pace. That much I can tell you. So that's going to be, I don't know if it's on purpose from FOP, I'm not sure, but every time you say one, they say another, and that's negotiation, and that's the way it is. So I didn't need someone getting $175 an hour to go back and forth and just wait until the new call and then they I didn't need that. I didn't think we need we had that kind of money. So as far as you're saying transfer, I let, I am not, I don't hold anything back. I'm here every day. Now, if I'm not here every day, please tell someone what day that may be. But I'm here every day. Now, I may not be here from 9 to 5, because I may have to go to a meeting, but I'm here every day. So if you miss me on Monday because you couldn't make it, I'm here Tuesday. All you have to do is come in and ask. We, the, uh, we have the, the finance chairman and, and um, the treasurer are not here. The finance chairman is here every day. The treasurer is not here every day. But if there's questions, come in, come ask. Come find out. It's not a problem. It's not a matter of somebody's hiding something. I don't know where that comes from, but if that's the word you choose to use, that's okay. But I do know what I'm here and what I'm doing. I'm not one of the people. I, you have yet heard me say, what I'm doing and how much I'm getting paid. And that's not about that. I'm not here for the pay. Believe me, I'm not here for the pay. I'm here for the people of Salt Hill. And that's why I thought I was elected to make changes so we don't do the same thing we've been doing for the last 20 some years. So yes, it's going to, you have to break eggs to make an omelet. So you have to do some things. If you do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result, then I would be crazy. So yes. Things have to change. I was voted in to make that change. Some of these things may not you may not like them, but it's a change that we have to go forward in because we don't have the money because we've lost over seven hundred thousand dollars. I'll say that again: seven hundred thousand dollars we've lost in revenue over the past year for people that have moved out and not moved in. So where do you get that money from? So you have to make a difference. You have to, I'm not trying to raise. Uh, um, taxes, and I don't think any of these trustees up here want to raise taxes. So you have to do something to get that money to continue the services that we have. As of yet, I have not let anyone go um, because of that reason. I tried to make it work the best way I could, and I tried to do that. So that's the only thing I'm, I'm saying. And then as far as trying to uh, the, the water bills, I mean, yes. It was voted back in because we lost 100. I don't know where they got their number from. That 95 percent of the people that were given a water bill were paying their water bills. I don't know where that came from, and that was the, that was the reason I heard the reason why they voted a dollar back because 95 percent of the people they must have just did it for that one week. Because I tell you right now, and I got records to show that we get maybe 65 to 70 percent of the people. They get water bills paid. We have a list, a cut off list, a shut off list, each and every month in the hundreds. Every month. Taxes, uh, uh, we, we're trying to hold those, that, that's being raised. If that's being done, that's being done by the county. 
but I'm not trying to raise tax or raise anything. Yes, the rates that we raised for the uh, sewer had to be taken care of, had to be done. But I don't know where else we can get the water, the money from to make those changes that we are mandated to make. So if there's any other questions, anybody have questions? I'm, I'm around. I'm not. I don't run from. I don't run from that. That being said, uh, we we'll go right into. Mayor's report. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to bring up. First of all, cleanup day will be April 28th. I'm here at the uh, Village Hall. This is where the Village Wide Cleanup it starts at 8 a.m. We'll have refreshments at that morning, and then we'll have uh, lunch at about 1 o'clock back here at the Senior Center. And as I stated before, I we hope to have gloves and bags, which we will have. But I hope that you can bring your neighbors or friends to come out and help us clean up the whole saw village. We have different areas that we're going to be starting at, and hopefully we can get those done and move to the other areas. So hoping that I can get a big turnout to help with that part of it, to help clean up the village of saw village. Uh, I just wanted to remind the uh, trustees and anyone else that may be a commissioner, to fill out the economic interest statements that are due by May 1st. After that date, <coughs> you can fill it out online. If you don't know how, see me after the meeting. I can show you what needs to be done because there's so much here that have not done it. So you do have to go online and uh, get your password and a user ID and you can complete it online in less than 10 minutes. That's all that I have. Uh, go to support with my council. are being ready for the one that's taking place at the school district. They will be there on mo that Monday and then the following Tuesday they will be here. So what I would ask of each of you is to provide a short, brief, written report to me next Wednesday. I know normally you give them to me Thursday, Friday, Sunday, or Monday. But this time I am going to ask that you have them for Wednesday so that I can meet with the young people. And if you would like to go over to Rick over to meet with them, you're more than welcome to join me. I suspect that I will do that on Friday. But they, we will sit behind them. They will sit at our seats and some of them will sit down front and they will give our reports for the most part, okay? And uh, after that, we're looking at possibly the first weekend, the first Friday of May, to just bring them all back here, give them a tour, and then provide lunch for them. And for that, you are definitely welcome to do so as well. April the 18th, next Wednesday. <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you, that concludes my report. Okay, Village Engineer, uh, Mr. Jim Zarni. Thank you, Mayor. An agenda item for tonight's meeting is the award of the Arrowhead Park Improvement Project. Bob's Engineering is recommending that the Village award this project to D&J Landscape Incorporated. The project involves construction of a baseball field, playground, access of walking paths, grading, and drainage improvements. The project is 90% funded by an Open Space Lands Acquisition and Development Grant Program provided by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. The project will be constructed in the spring and summer and will be completed by the end of August. That completes my report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Friday Prophet, Chief House Buffering. Thank you, Mayor and Board. Uh, 
This was the first in a long time. Over the period from March 22nd through April the 4th, the fire department responded to 12 calls. I think the guys got arrested and fell asleep or something. It's, it's, it's cools to them. We had five fire alarms, four vehicle accidents, and three ambulance uh, PD assists. Thank you. Police Department Chief Robert Kowalski. I can't be that short. Uh, so for the past two weeks, uh, Police Department responded to 450 calls with seven arrests. And to clarify, uh, on March 31st, Cook County Sheriff's officers responded to a call in Fort Heights of a suspicious circumstance on a 1400 block of Greenwood Avenue. Responding uh, sheriff's officers found three men in the home with an underage female. The males were taken into custody. The female explained she was grabbed by the three unknown uh, offenders on the street in Sauk Village, but this was never reported to our department. The juvenile victim stated that she did not know the offenders and she was sexually assaulted by them. The three offenders are well known to our police department, but no longer live in Sauk Village. They're currently being held on $250,000 bond, and they are all uh, 19 years of age. On April 2nd, while on patrol, officers observed an individual known to uh, have a suspended driver's license in a vehicle around the area of the Marathon gas station. The officer ran the subject through our law enforcement data system and confirmed the subject did not have a valid driver's license. The officer activated his emergency lights and the driver began to flee from the area northbound on 394. The officer began to pursue the vehicle when the vehicle began to smoke and become disabled. The officer and backup officers were able to apprehend the driver and three other passengers in the vehicle. Once outside the car, the officer saw drugs in the vehicle. The officer also discovered drug paraphernalia and a loaded automatic handgun. All items were recovered and sent to the Illinois State Police Crime Lab. Felony charges were approved on the driver for fleeing and eluding possession of controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia, and unlawful use of a weapon. And on April 4th, officers received a call of suspicious circumstances at a vacant house at 2150 to 19th place. Upon arrival, four juvenile offenders fled from the house. Officers pursued the uh, offenders uh, foot catching all four. Juvenile <coughs> were identified and turned over to their respective parents. Petitions will be filed with juvenile court uh, on the offenders for burglary, but I'm not counting on the state's attorney's office to do anything with that. Uh, the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police, AAA, and the Illinois High School and College Driver Education Association are coordinating the second annual statewide Distracted Driving Awareness Week, April 23rd through the 27th. Sauk Village Police Department will again participate in this campaign. Contrary to what some uh, drivers may think, hands-free, handheld, and in-vehicle technologies are not distraction-free. Even if a driver's eyes are on the road and their hands are on the wheel, the latest AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety Research found that drivers who text when behind the wheel more than double their odds of being involved in a crash. Drivers who use in-vehicle technologies like voice-based and touch screen features can be distracted for more than 40 seconds when completing tasks like programming nav navigation or sending a text message. And removing eyes from the road for just two seconds doubles the risk for a crash. Violating Illinois' distracted driving laws can be costly. Know before you go in Illinois, laws prohibit all drivers from texting and driving. They prohibit all drivers from using a handheld phone while driving. The laws prohibited all teens from using uh, a cell phone while driving. So officers will be watching uh, during that time period, April 23rd and 27th. Lastly, the Sauk Village Police Department is now registered as a prescription drug drop-off site. The quarterly drug, uh, drug drop-off will uh, be held again on April 28th, the same day as the village cleanup, between 8 and 3 p.m. in the lobby of the Sauk Village Police Department. We're asking anyone who would like to dispose of their unwanted drugs, uh, please feel free to do so before you go out and clean up Sauk Village. That'll be the end of my report. Thank you, Chief.
Uh, Community Development Director Sherry Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Night court totals for April 4th, we had a 128 on the court docket, 13 were found liable, 9 were found not guilty, and 106 were found guilty for failure to appear and fines were defaulted at $750. I have filed an additional 12 liens today, equaling a total of $10,864.55, and this concludes my report. Thank you. Economic Development Director, Mr. Joseph Wizard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tonight, the Wood Board has before it a request for proposals for grass mowing for the vacant homes is scheduled in the Illinois Housing Development Authority grant. The village was awarded. We are still in the process of our preliminary due diligence list, um, checklist, excuse me, on each property identified to be mowed and or demolished under the grant. As the Mayor reported two weeks ago, the village is scheduled to maintain 112 vacant homes mowing, removal of trees and overgrown brush in 35 homes, and board up and securing 25 vacant homes and demolishing eight. We will be preparing another RFP for remediation of bushes and trees on vacant properties as we identify as we have identified the most critical. We'll also be putting together an RFQ for board up service securing the properties as we've identified as we need immediate attention. Additionally, <clears throat> we had a meeting with the Illinois Housing Development Authority and their legal team this afternoon to discuss the process by which the village will be getting reimbursed for the work performed under the grant. A resolution will be before the village board in May to accept the grant for the vacant abandoned home maintenance. We anticipate closing the grant out sometime in June, before June 13th. Our first funding request will be submitted on or before September 13th. It is worth noting that only 15 communities in all of Cook County received funding, Sauk Village being one of the 15. The village has two surface transportation programs, STP, projects that are queued up for one of them, which is for this year. Uh, as you may be aware, Cornell and Torrance uh, Avenue resurfacing surface, surface project is one of those. The total project cost is estimated at 702,000, of which the village is using an investment foot grant and motor fuel tax dollars complete the match for the federal aid dollars. The second is for the intersection improvements and traffic signal at Sauk Trail on our Colony Drive. This project was authorized for $550,000 for federal aid. The process by which funding for these future projects um, is going to be changing. Currently, our COG is South Suburban Regional Council, which will no longer be making determinations of allocations. This will be moved to CMAP and the transportation projects will need to be more of a regional approach and become even more competitive. Uh, Mayor Burgess and I met with Cook County Transportation and Highway Department Superintendent John Nonan in Chicago last week to discuss future improvements in the queue for Sauk Trail west of 394. Engineering work has already begun at the county level and the village will be involved in this process. Mr. Nonan is committed to assisting the village and our commitment to economic development, including expediting matters which are time critical. Cook County's two, uh, 2018 Invested Cook uh, deadline passed recently, which yielded 70 applications seeking $40 million in grants for the $8.5 million that was set aside for the transportation improvements. Sauk Village has an interview with Cook County scheduled for April 16th with respect to this grant. Uh, Jim Zarnick will be joining me uh, in that. Uh, the Cook County Board of Commissioners is expected to approve the awards in July of this year. Sauk Village applied for $450,000 in this route for expanding Galesburg and roadways within the Logistics Center to expand economic development opportunities. The Village Board has before it tonight for approval the final payment to <coughs> Theodorus Panagiotopoulos for the TIF number four improvements. I have provided each of the members of the board copies of the documentation necessary to validate payment was made by Mr. Panos under the terms of the redevelopment agreement. Finally, the board also has before it a motion to enter into a sales agreement with Mr. Abdul <coughs> Abazir. This authorizes the mayor to enter into the sales agreement for the old laundromat at 1717 Sock Trail, which the village acquired through a scavenger sale in 2015 and finally took ownership. 17. 
This was put out for, public, for proposals. We did receive two proposals. The staff and I have reviewed both, and our recommendation is to move forward with Mr. Abuzir's proposal for the purchase for $40,000 and $55,000 in improvements. Uh, we will also have a resolution before the village board in two weeks to support approval of the Class 8 for both parcels of land that are involved. Mr. Abuzir will have to file his application with Cook County for the Class 8 um, after we close on the property. I have one correction on the RFP that you have before you. Um, the dates are correct, however, the term of months is incorrect. So uh, on number six of the term of contract, the term of contract shall run for five months. It is typed in there as seven. Um, however, the dates may through October are correct. That concludes my report. Thank you. Beautification Committee Chairman. Well, not a question, but a statement that, to clear up because I talked to him about the uh, infrastructure report that was on the uh, accounts payable, um, and he's going to give me that information free of charge. So I just want to make that sure that I'm so I won't have to ask for it in a FOIA request. And also, I talked to him about uh, getting some information for the infrastructure, and he advised me to go and talk to the different uh, mayors and engineers in the different neighborhooding neighborhooding townships. And it takes anywhere from three to nine months. I know you're eager to get this recommendation, but I can't do it without some updated data. He said everything that they have in their file needs to be updated. Am I right? Or I need some clarity. Uh, I just want to put it in the, minute, in the minutes that we talk about the different uh, things that I need in order to uh, do the infrastructure, recommendation for infrastructure. Yeah. Um, my understanding is to respond to the FOIA. I need to get a list of recommendations for infrastructure improvements. Very quick to get that. And um, in an answer on what that FOIA was and the accounts payable. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes? Okay. Uh, beautification. Mr. Mayor, sorry. I have something for Mr. Zarnick as well before we move on that on the agenda for tonight, we also have a motion to accept the proposal and recommendation from the DNJ landscape relative to the Oslog grants. It was my understanding last week that while the bid came in um, with a base bid and an alternate bid, we can't afford either one. So we just talked about a reduced amount, yet I don't see anywhere in the agenda for tonight to say that we're accepting it for a lower amount. So I would like to make sure that we have it on record, the amount that we are talking about versus what's in the document. Yes, so um, we have to award based on the bid that was offered. So that's how the motion has to be worded. However, we will not allow the actual <coughs> outlay from the village to exceed the village funding, which is, I want to say, $206,000. Nine thousand, somewhere in that range. Okay. Beautification committee, uh, Chairman, Trustee Linda Todd. No report at this time. Uh, Senior Advisory Council, uh, Chairman, that's the Emmett Collins. Give me the right. <coughs> Our next meeting for the Senior Advisory Council is Thursday, April 12th at 5 p.m. And all are welcome. Also, uh, our April calendar is posted. You all the copy of these trustees.
Our energy service programs, TIDA, is, uh, well, April 10th, which was today, we have one. Next one's the 23rd of April. Then we have two in May, May 14th and 21st. From 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Bloom Township Public Service Program is Friday, April 13th only, which will feature help with the water bill and other utilities. Plus, we will be giving out free water bottles three gallon bottles of water on that day. And also insurance wireless with free phones will be there all of these dates. And has to put in an application to use the senior center once a week to offer free phones. Also information on Tuesday scheduled for the second Tuesday of each month was today. And our monthly health fair will be April 26th. And we'll feature guests. Our feature guests is Oak Street Health, United Healthcare, and Walgreens. And you know, please don't forget our game night every first and third Friday from 5 p.m. You know, to 9 p.m. You know. and, and that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Reports from trustees, the standing committee, public service committee, trustee bringing through. As mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Robinson Engineer is going to provide me with some information about infrastructure, um, and also they also have information in their files about water rates, uh, what we need to do, and uh, so once I get the information, he said it shouldn't take that long that we're going to start. It takes three months, three to six months in order to get a recommendation. Once I put all that information together, we're going to sit down and talk. And then we're going to also talk to Kevin about what we could do about the infrastructure improvement. This does not include water based infrastructure improvement. So that's on an ongoing event. So as soon as he gets all the information together, we'll start working. That's it. Budget and Finance Committee, Trustee Roger Grant. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two things. Uh, one, uh, next Wednesday, 7 o'clock, we're going to return to air uh, Budget Finance Committee meeting. Uh, and also, hopefully within the next month or so, we'll be able to get the uh, new budget for the fiscal year to the boards for review uh, as uh, it's getting pretty close to the fiscal year. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, parks and Recs, uh, right now, parks, the uh, gym is open on Mondays and Fridays uh, from 3 to around 6.30, 7 o'clock. Uh, if anyone is interested, I'm looking for volunteers to uh, help out on some days. Uh, you need to come up to the Village Hall, apply, we will talk. Uh, and uh, right now, I'm looking for volunteers to help in that aspect. Uh, the new budget coming, I'm looking probably for uh, getting something or uh, getting a person full time there or at least part time to start out to actually run and bring programs. So that's something that's going to be uh, on the new horizon uh, for them. Uh, we're trying to do right now getting some needed repairs in the uh, gym and over on the uh, uh, community center side. So uh, that's being done right now by Public Works, and uh, we're trying to, to uh, upgrade and update a lot of the things that haven't been done in there for years and years. So, but I'm I'm still looking for volunteers to help out with the uh, with the gym. Uh, any other day during the week. Right now, last day I have somebody Monday and Friday, just Monday and Friday. So, um, if we can get some people to help us out with that, greatly appreciate. Um, housing and governmental relations, trustee Tate. No report. Okay, uh, ordinance review committee, trustee Linda Todd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we had a meeting scheduled for last week, and due to the fact that I did not have a quorum, we canceled it, and it's now scheduled for this Thursday at 6:30, which is eight, that's April 12th. And what we're going to do is we're getting closer to um, the false alarm ordinance. Um, so I'll probably be presenting it before the board probably within a month. We also have something else that we're reviewing, reviewing is the water rehab rates. And that's all I have. 
Thank you. Public Safety Committee, Trustee Beth Zupan. Uh, nothing on the Public Safety Committee since we didn't meet last week, but I would like to uh, just say a couple things real quickly about the Easter egg hunt that we had uh, the day before Easter. Wanted to say this last Tuesday, but didn't get a chance since the meeting ended a little bit earlier than planned. I wanted to just say I thought we had a really nice turnout the de that day, even though the weather didn't really cooperate with uh, you know the, the cold, windy, uh, dreary morning that we had that day. But I, I more you know wanted to thank those who did come out for doing so, uh, the volunteers that we had to help us with that. And also wanted to mention we had some corporate sponsors that we wanted to, to show our appreciation to as well. The Nancy McConaughey Library, Culver's of Crete, and Texas Roadhouse of Dyer. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee. Our new business, I'll entertain a motion to approve accounts payable for the date of 410, 2018. So moved. Okay, it was moved. It was moved by Trustee Grant, second by Trustee Ty. Any question? Question. Uh, Mr. Mayor, on page one of the uh, house payable, we got the owners group on there where we paid them uh, sixty-six thousand. I guess this is part of the premium, but it says a long down payment. Now, uh, I talked to Mohan about this, and Mohan said, "Well, the way I understand it is that." The first insurance funding is paying the owners group, but we got to pay them eight thousand dollars in order to get the six six or six thousand dollars. So we don't have all the money. That's that's what he told me. So I'm I'm sort of confused about that. This, and he said this has been an ongoing thing for the last two or three years. Okay, right. is that the question? Well, I mean, I have not finished. I'm just with that particular one. So. I mean, is that a one-point thing that we got to pay somebody else to pay our insurance? Is that the insurance is present sometimes, but you know, we don't have that type of money. So in order to keep our rate where we have it, we have to go through the financial institution to pay it basically a loan. And that's what they charge for that loan. For them to pay that money, we pay them a down payment so much each month. Okay, so the next installment that we have to, for insurance, we have to pay them another $8,000. I'm not sure what the installments are, but I'm sure more honest to tell you what the installments are. Okay. Well, then, um, also on page one, we have, we paid the orange group $5,568,000 $5, for a job consumption for the month, month ending March 30th. And then if we go down on that same page, we have paid uh, Dr. Strutter $3,360 for professional services. So, uh, again, even if she's doing police negotiations on page three, we paid the uh, law firm uh, $1,986. And, and uh, you said this is something we need because we really can't afford all this. Uh, it's sort of expensive for HR services. We only have 115 people, and she's been here for, since 2015. It seems like to me they should have it. The employees should have it by now on what's expected to them. But to pay her three thousand three hundred sixty dollars for professional service, it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just she's it's getting to where it's a luxury we cannot afford to have a third party in here. And you said, well, okay, um, you know, if you want the attorneys here, well, we got to pay attorneys a flat fee, let them do their job, and you know, what do we need to pay Dr. Strada extra? Three thousand three hundred sixty dollars for three days, four days of work. It doesn't make any sense, but that's that's my comment on that. Also, on um, page <coughs> <case> three, <coughs> it says police negotiations to the attorney. My thousand nine hundred eighty-six dollars for the hour we talked about. We just paid the Dr. Strutter three thousand for the same thing. <coughs> now, also on here. We go back to um, what was confusing about this. On page two, Robinson Engineering was paid a, uh, $2,900 for a report request. I didn't do it before you guys got all upset. Um, 
for word of name uh, information, information on page two. Then on page six, they asked us for $3,000 for word of name replacement. So I asked him for a copy of whatever he was doing there. So I don't know what's the difference in, uh, in that incident. I asked, well, Mohan was um, not here yesterday, and uh, I couldn't get the information because he said the database wasn't available. But uh, it seems like to me that uh, those are one of the two things. And, and the down at the bottom of page six, Robinson Engineer is doing a plan for the South uh, SP gas station. Now, as I understand it, when we brought that property up there, we didn't know what was going on there. So you're saying this, this gas wash is going to be up there on 394? So this, that's the question. This gas, uh, we don't have a gas station there on 394? They, I mean, they were, they were doing plans for something. Where's this gas station going? Is that all your questions? Okay. I'm, I'm trying to ask you whatever I can on the past. Do you have any more questions? I mean... Because we're not going to debate back and forth. I'm not debating back and forth. I'm asking you, is that all your questions? No, that's not all my questions, Mr. Mayor. Okay. This okay. is a well, public well, forum. I have public questions. I'm not going to debate back and forth. I'm not debating with you. I just ask you questions. Are there any more questions? And tell us what's right now. Maybe we can ask us. Trustee, if you have any more questions, please ask them all. I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm, I'm sure you're not going to do that. I will try to answer the questions that you ask. Okay, well, okay, the biggest thing everybody wants to know is why we keep paying Dr. Stroud all this money, $3,000, $3,000, $3,000, for professional work, and then have to go back and pay the lawyers almost $2,000. Why is she, you know, it, that, that's not saving money. We don't have any money. We have made it perfectly clear to us that we don't have any money yet. We pay all these large amounts to uh, Dr. Strother. I don't care if she's qualified now. Soft Village is broke. Yeah. Can't afford her. Okay. Anything she does has to go to the attorney anyway. So why don't you let me pay an attorney? Let them do their job. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. okay. First of all, Back in whatever I think that was page one, um, the Owens Group, the down payment, I explained that to you. The Owens Group HR, we had, as I stated two weeks ago, or maybe no more than that, that that was the last date that we would use them for our Owens Group and we had to pay that out. That's what that is. That was also with the amount that was added on for administration fee that I did not want and I took it out of there. The professional services, we voted on that she would be the negotiator. Now, if you wanted to have the, oh, the lawyers do it for twice as much, you know, it, that wasn't voted on. It was voted down that it would be done for 85. But you did not tell, you did not even stop at this other one where it says the old was stuck for $20,739 back in May, in March, or April, I'm sorry, 2017. Nobody asked I'm surprised that that was never asked about for that one month. As far as Robinson Engineering doing for the, um, um, what, is, what is that, at the last page at the bottom for the gas and watch? That's a preliminary study, and it was paid out of the chip fund because it's going to be in the chip fund. <coughs> so that, excuse me. I, that's not what I asked. You asked me what it was the Salt Village Gas Plan review. You didn't ask that. I asked you, are we getting another gas? Station? I didn't. I, okay, it's a review. So they were Salt. I mean, sorry, the Robinson Engineer was asked to look into that to see if it's feasible if they went that way. That's what that was for, and that was paid through TIF. As far as the I-394 water main replacement, they were asked to look at that because we may have to replace the water main at 394 that goes across 394, so they have to look into that, and that's what they charge to do that. In regards to the, um, The, you see, saying we can't afford Dr. Straw, we can't afford not to have someone to pay a less amount 
when we come to negotiation. I explain that over and over again, so I guess you like hearing that, but we don't have the money to pay twice as much as someone else can do the same thing. When we get closer and it gets to that point, yes, we would have our lawyers to look at it, but to go back and forth, as I keep saying over and over again, we go back and forth, and what they're doing, negotiations, anything about negotiations, if you know anything about it, you're gonna go back and forth. If pay someone to keep doing that, I didn't see it feasible for the other. So that's why we, we have that. Any other questions on the uh, House panel? I have a motion on the floor. I have a comment. I want to address somebody's questions for, or comments from the audience earlier as it relates to Dr. Strowler's services. Uh, these are not three individual days. If you look at the um, bottom of page one, you'll see that these are invoice dates. Her hourly rate is $85 an hour. So you'll notice that the first invoice date, March 25th, is for 14 hours worth of work. The second invoice date is the 28th, which is 14 and a half hours worth of work. The third invoice is for 11 hours worth of work. I don't know the specific days covered under each invoice, but I'm sure they are more than a day apiece. The other comment I would make relative to that is that every invoice goes to the mayor for his review prior to checks being even put on accounts payable. So the finance director doesn't just take these himself. Everything goes to the mayor and there's a conversation between he and the mayor before they get presented for inclusion in the accounts payable. Thank you. <coughs> Yes. Trustee Jones, Trustee Tate, Trustee Todd. Yes. Trustee Zuhan. Yes. Trustee Brewer. Present. Motion is carried. I'll entertain a motion to approve the ordinance for section 7, D8-186 and 78-187 of the Salt Village Municipal Code for sewer charges. So. Moved by Trustee Grant and second by Trustee Zupon. Any questions? Question. Well, I'm in, Mr. Mayor. Uh, after doing some research, uh, I discovered that the sewer rates have been uh, raised ever since 2006 for the making operations of the current sewer system. But um, once we get the monies in, it's commingled with the water fund, and that money is used for everything else except improvement to the current water system. Now, uh, Robinson Engineer came in and he said he needed about 582,000 to do two different things that's mandated by the state. But um, it seems like to me, if we've been collecting money from 2006 for improvements to the sewer system, we should have the money there. The money's not there. So, uh, this, I'm, I'm, uh, Whoever wrote this uh, ordinance up, I applaud them for putting that, the uh, phrase in there so we can build a surplus to fund ongoing uh, repairs associated with this utility. Because if we don't separate the sewer fund from the water fund, uh, we don't run into the same situations that we were in before. And my question is, and I'm asking uh, Jim about it, is that since 2006, all this money has been taken in for the improvement of the system. <coughs> Some kind of data or report that shows what actually has been done to improve the sewer system and how much money has been taken in for the uh, for the sewer system. Because we're collecting money, it doesn't make any sense to raise rates every five years if we're not improving or doing something to the water system. And since 2006, since we collected all this money, well, we I don't know what improvements have been done to the sewer system. So is it possible, or who could I talk to about getting what has been done to improve our uh, sewer system since 2006? The rates have been raised specifically for improvement and repairs, so what would I get that information? Is that it? Okay. Um, as far as finding that out, um, I don't know where to tell you since 2006 what went where. I can only tell you that when this, and that's what I said, when this is being done, this money will be separated for that reason. As was stated last week when we had the um, presentation, 
Yeah, anybody that's collected freight for right now, any over, that was not you saying over, it's anybody collected for the raise will be set aside so we can fund these um, items that will put the port of village. So we won't be able to do it right away because we have to save the money, but this money for the sewer rate will be saved and put aside as we get the money in, we will start uh, doing some of the mandated uh, actions that we have to take. So that money will be set aside for that reason. Comment. Yes, sir. Uh, so just want to point out that uh, so there will be a separate GL number just set up strictly for these funds. Yes, sir. Uh, for, the, for the raise. For the raise. Yes, sir. If, if they're, if they're approved. And also, I just want to ask you uh, about how much is the minimum water bill, I believe, uh, the minimum rates. And uh, so I just kind of went back uh, and I just figured out that if this is approved uh, tonight, that the average water bill probably, if you use the minimum, rise about five dollars and about seventy cents or so. Um, so the typical water bill average now for a minimum is about one oh eight and it rises to about one fourteen. That's every two months. Every two months, correct. Any other questions? So you said you didn't know you're gonna be general seven fifty minutes with I I mean I don't know what happened two thousand six and how much they were spent uh, two thousand seven, eight or nine, how much money was spent on um, sewer, uh, on the sewer itself. No, I don't have that. I don't know if Mohan has it. I'm not sure, but I know I don't know where to go to find that out. I can't tell you where to go, but I don't know where to go. Any other questions? Madam, call back the question. Call Jones, uh, Tate? Yes. Todd? Yes. Zutan? Yes. Brewer? Yes. Grant? Yes. Motion is carried. I will entertain a motion to accept the proposal and recommendation of the D and J Landscape Company for Arrowhead Park improvements for the open space land acquisition and development, the Ice Land Grant. So moved. Okay, it was moved by Trustee uh and second by Trustee Todd. Any questions? Uh, just comment uh, to Trustee Zupan's point. Is there anything in writing you can get that said that we want to go above that $206,000 uh, mark? I know that we have to award the grant in that amount that uh, it was bid for, but is there anything that we can get in writing that says that we won't go above that amount? Yeah, we won't go past that. Um, Correct. Well, the money's going to tell us right away that that's, that's all we have. So we're not we only, we're only going to vote out what we have. And that's all we're going to get reimbursed for. That's a reimbursement. So that's all we'll get reimbursed for with that would be that amount. So that that'll stop itself. But I will get something in writing and pass it out to the trustees that you can actually see it coming from the um, county. That's where it would be coming from. Yes. 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 Grant? Yes. Go. Motion is carried. Item D. Approval and authorization for the mayor to enter into a sales agreement with Ms. Abzur for the redevelopment of the village owned property. Um, pin number 32.25.302.026 and 027. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Dupont, second by Trustee Todd. Any questions? <coughs> Madam Clerk? Trustee Todd? Yes. Dupont? Yes. Brewer? Yes. Grant? Yes. Jones? Tate? Yes. Motion is carried. I'll entertain a motion for the final approval of the final payment of $67,010.59. To Mr. Theodopo Theo Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> for the development of the fifth floor property. So moved. Second. Was moved by Trustee Grant, second by Trustee outside. Any questions? Comment. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, when uh, when we approve this uh, sixty-seven thousand for uh, Mr. Pano's house. Uh, 
um, it was a resident that came in that particular night, and she complained. I know this is a little off script, but if you allow me to uh, say this, um, the uh, resident uh, stated to us that she had snakes under her sidewalk. Now, to me, we're going to pay a vendor $67,000 to get his parking lot paid and stuff. And I went by the resident's house yesterday. She still has snakes on her sidewalk. So to me, things are being done that's not addressing the resident's issue. But you know, but we can pay out sixty-seven thousand dollars to a vendor. We need to sort of think about our priorities here. And I thought I thought our priorities should be residents. So with that, I just wanted to throw that out there that we might want to think about when residents come up and ask for a few little things we might want to give it to them. In my comment. Uh, trustee, first of all, this is not a vendor. He's a business owner. Business owner. I'm sorry. And um, he is in a TIF district and he utilizes TIF funds. That's one of the reasons why a lot we have a TIF district so they can utilize and for the betterment of their particular facade. That's his facade. We can help him along. As far as what you're talking about, something I don't know if the village is in the snake business. But if you know if you want to rent, if I don't know who would go by and pick, I don't have anybody in the village that go by and pick up snakes. I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, if we need to hire someone for that reason, I'm not sure, but that's not the first time I heard about snakes being in the village. But it's not the first time I've heard of snakes being in the village. But uh, we don't even have animal. Uh, Control officer. So the spend the sixty-seven thousand it is for the is for the business that's inside of TIF and that's what that's for. We cannot use that money anywhere but the TIF. So if the person doesn't live in the TIF, which I can tell you right now they don't. Um, I don't know what to, uh, to tell you as far as that's concerned. I like I said, I got a phone call from someone that had a snake, and I told them to call anti flu the Society of the Chicago Heights. That's the only thing I can tell them. I don't have anybody here in the village that would go by and take a snake out. So <coughs> anti flu decided will come out. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to uh, make my second comment on that. I wasn't talking about taking the snakes out or anything. I was saying that the resident came and she said her sidewalk was crumbling and it had snakes under it. The, the, uh, I guess the, uh, the uh, issue about the, what she was talking about is that her sidewalk was crumbling and she's a resident. And I'm saying that we could spend $67,000 on campus from a tip or whatever, but we should be able to get her sidewalk fixed just like we fixed this driveway. So I'm, I'm not talking about getting snakes or anything like that, but residents should come get a little something for all the money that's spending up here. That's you're, 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 again, trustee, you're missing uh, two different things. One, I'm not missing anything. I'm talking about okay. the ladies. I, 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 anything, anything, any, uh, any other comments? I think they got it. Any other comments? Madam Clerk. Trustee Zipman. Yes. Trustee Brewer. Yes. Grant. Yes. Jones, Tate, Ty. Yes. Motion approved. I'll entertain a motion to approve for request for a proposal for the grass mowing project utilized by the IHDA grant. I'll make, I'll approve it. I'm sorry, I will entertain a motion. So moved with the change mentioned previously. Second. Okay, it was moved by Trustee Lupin, the second. Okay, the change is that it wouldn't, uh, the change is what you were asking about the, uh, the amount of money, correct? No, yeah, the term. The term, the term yeah. The document says seven months, it's really five months. Five months, yeah. yeah. So it should, yeah, she, no, yeah, she's amazing that she would vote, she make a motion that it would be for five months. It was moved by Trustee Zupai, second by Trustee Clifford. Yes. Any questions? Madam Clerk. Brewer? Yes. Grant? Yes. Jones? 
Motion is carried. Approval and authorization for the mayor to enter an agreement with the human resources consultant between the village and Dr. Strader. I'll entertain a motion. So no. Second. The move by Trustee Grant, second by Trustee Zupai. Any questions? I have a comment. I actually do have a question, but I have a comment as well. I noticed we got a. a a revised copy of the statement of work. And I noticed that taken out of it, the last meeting we, uh, Trustee Zupan talked about, um, as it said, maximum bu budget approved is 6,000. And I think at that time she wanted monthly put in. But I see that's completely taken out of this statement of work. And I noticed that the dates have been changed down there as well. And here's my comment. I do not believe that we need an HR person at this time because it's so costly. Now, one of the things is, after reviewing several invoices, and there was a stack of invoices, it's very disturbing that, the, that she charges us to talk to uh, the mayor's wife, that she plans parties, things like that. That is not what we would need her for. One of the things, though, is I did look at something that she had taken care of, and it had to do with the employee handbook. It has the old administration, and has committees on there that are no longer. So I don't know if it was a copy and paste. I don't know if she knows who the new administration is, but it's disturbing. But my comment is we cannot afford it, and I want you to know that. No question? Comment. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, according to the uh, employee's handbook that on page nine, there's a conflict of interest with having Dr. Strada here. Again, I want to say we can't afford her. And it, also in addition to that, there's no ordinance that even established the HR for Salt Village. So uh, I think that's against the Illinois State statute. Um, there is no ordinance on the books that I'm aware of, and I asked the trustee to look for it, but I, you know, she hasn't been able to find one. And of course, I'm going to go over it again. Cut out the middle man. We don't need Dr. Strong. You only have 115 of full and part-time employees. Most of them have been here 25, 30 years and stuff. All you do is go and talk to them. They can do whatever you want them to do. But to have Dr. Strong here, costing us more money, mm -hmm. talking about negotiation, we are paying the attorney for everything she does. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Just you just need to cut out the middleman. She's not necessary. Right. That's what we pay the attorneys for. If we're paying twice as much, at least they're getting the job done. All this back and forth with Dr. Strada, it doesn't make any sense. And and every time I go back there, only thing I ever see her do is sit in the office giggling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just being. We're prepared. not. We're not. Please, um, trust me. We're not going to do personality. I'm not being personal. personal. I'm, I'm not being personal. I'm just being facts. No, but you're being personal. I don't want to talk about it. I'm just being personal. You're being personal. I'm not being personal. And you can't control the way I talk. This is a public meeting. I'm talking to the public. I have a U.S. constitutional right to talk. Dr. Strada does not need to be here. That's She's right. costing us too much money. We pay the attorneys, let the attorneys do their job. That's right. that, that means every time I need something, I need to write up and send it to the attorney. At least they give me a stipend. You pay, you are paying her. For what? But then, you know, that's the end of my comment. Comment, Mr. Mayor. I disagree with the other trustees. I believe we do need an HR person. Oh, please. No, some way else. If you work in a corporation with any number of employees, you have an HR person to make sure that things are running as they should and employees are not running willy nilly. That's why we have the Owens group. Excuse me, can we have our meeting up here, please? I just ask that we, that we will respect you. After it's over, give us uh, public comment as we get another meeting. We have something to say, have a problem. But when we have a meeting, can we at least get some respect that you're not trying to over talk us and we're trying to have our meeting here? Thank you very much. I'll continue to say that while I looked at some of the invoices and wasn't real thrilled with the content of the invoices, she does have a role to play here in her.
funding is included in our budget. So it's not like we're out here spending money that is unbudgeted funds, and we do not run to the lawyers with HR issues. We involve the attorneys with negotiations when it comes to contract negotiations, which is a separate conversation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor. We're not going to revisit now. I'm trying to see the last one. I'm going to take the issue, and I'm going to make this comment on your, uh, on your um, uh, uh, agreement that you issue. At the bottom, you have the mayor has to approve of the, uh, uh, the phrase. But you don't say the mayor and the board, you just say the mayor. Okay. And I asked to put this for the mayor and put the vice and consent of the board. That should be included. Right. <coughs> the wrong number say. Mayor Derek Burgess or Dr. Straub. This should be Mayor Derek Burgess and with the consent and vice and consent of the board. That's right. Any other question? Why isn't that in there? Because I have taken care of day to day operations, ma'am. This is a day-to-day -day operation. I'm not going to ask the board, can I move forward with that? If we need to vote money out of legislation, yes. Yes, it has to go before the board, and it will come before the board. If there's any money voted out, any legislation change. But day-to-day -day operations, that it falls under the mayor. It always has. So this ain't the first time this has been like this. It always has been that way. So and, and eight, any other questions? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 No. No. I don't know where we can get more comments, but I'll take this chance. No comments from the mayor board trustee. We'll talk with trustee uh, Ty. No comments. Trustee Brewer. Of course, I have no comment. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we are not home rule. You, anything you do here at the board, it should be with the mayor and the vice and consent of the board. I don't know uh, where you could get this information from, but uh, I'm quite sure we can do it. Illinois State statute, but I thought it was supposed to be the mayor and the consent of the board. You can't afford Dr. Sparrow. It's simple as that. And my comment. Trustee uh, Zupan. I just wanted to let everybody know that I did take Trustee Brewer's information that she shared with us last week about changing salaries uh, and there's nothing here that indicates we have done anything incorrectly so if you'd like to talk online we can we can do so um, this was in regards to state statute and where I see what you've shown to us does not indicate that we've done anything wrong Unreal. happy to talk with anybody after the meeting about it as well yeah. trustee grant yeah, no comment I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Trustee Bruno, second by Trustee um, Ty. All in favor? Aye. Hold it. Thank you.